nerds, what's up? Today I want to talk about the classic phrase, the book is always better. As more and more fantasy adaptations are coming out and we are experiencing a more intense negative reaction to those adaptations a lot of the times, we need to talk about why that phrase has such a bad reputation. We need to talk about how it's actually not really fandoms throwing tantrums and how that phrase is a myth for some people and for some people it's not. We're gonna get straight to the point today, so see you after the jump. So to come clean, I am definitely a the book was better girl. But in the last couple years, I've become loath to say that phrase because it's often hit back with, oh, of course, fandoms, fans are never happy, or of course you didn't like the adaptation, you'll never be satisfied. It's actually caused me a lot of self-reflection. I kind of wanted to think about like, why do I say that phrase and, and why do I feel that way? And one interesting thing I noticed as I was reflecting on this is that no matter the order that I read the book or the adaptation or how much I like the adaptation, I still always like the book better. In situations where I read the book first and was a huge fan of the book, but also loved the adaptation, I still preferred the book. In situations where I loved the book and didn't like the adaptation, I obviously liked the book better. In situations where I watched the adaptation first and loved the adaptation, then read the book, I still liked the book better. In fact, the only cases I could really find where I enjoyed an adaptation better, and I can only think of one time, was in a series where I actually just didn't even like the book to begin with. Actually, one of the most interesting case studies for me was the fact that I read the novelization of The Clone Wars, I think it was, before The Clone Wars came out. I'm pretty sure those books came out first. And I, I read the book and I loved it and then we went and saw the movie, but I liked the book better. And it's hilarious in that situation because the movie is the canonical version. <laughs> the movie is not the adaptation. The movie is the source material and the book is the adaptation of the movie. And I still preferred the book. So even in situations where I'm a huge fan of the adaptation, I still like the book better. What does that mean? And I've come to some ideas on it. So there are a lot of storytelling mediums. You can tell stories through the written word, either full on novels or short stories or poetry. You can tell stories through film or TV. You can tell stories through theater or songwriting. And these storytelling mediums all rely on and use very different things to get a story across. They're not all one-to-one. -one. A great example of this that doesn't involve books would be an awesome video that Jenny Nicholson did, who's like one of my favorite YouTubers of all time, talking about why the Dear Evan Hansen movie wasn't very good. And she talked a lot about how things that work on stage, things that work in the theater, just do not translate to screen one-to-one. -one. And it's interesting because you would think something like the theater relies on storytelling techniques that would be similar to film. They're both visual, but really they don't. There are very specific things in theater that are more acceptable or accepted by a watcher because of the limitations of a stage. This is no different for books and TV and film. They both employ different storytelling mediums that aren't one-to-one. -one. And the fact of the matter is my favorite form of getting a story is reading. Because I am a reader, I am naturally going to be drawn to the specific techniques that are unique to the written word in storytelling. And a lot of those traits that I am uniquely attracted to are untranslatable to film or TV. Now, this doesn't sound like it is a problem, so why is it becoming a problem? Well, the theory I wanna posit is because we have moralized books and TV. TV watching is portrayed as lazy, society going down the drain, stupidity, bad villain. These messages aren't always clear, but they're there. Whereas we have glorified and moralized reading to be smart, good, heroic, a learning endeavor. And while I know we could have an entire conversation on what has led to this and why this is the case and certain elements of social media and internet and screens and today, like I understand there is more there, but let's just take it at the base today because that's not what I wanna talk about. I wanna talk about how the perception of TV versus books, how that moralizing 
affects the phrase, the book was better. Because now when someone says, I liked the book better, it almost feels like they're saying it in a superior way, that they have some superiority complex, that they are saying they are better than you because they prefer the pure version over the, over the lazy, boring, uh, less intellectual film adaptation. You are not as good and smart as me who preferred the book version. Now look, I'm sure there are very obnoxious people on this planet who think that way because I am on YouTube and I see YouTube comments and it's not pretty. But I'd like to make the argument that the vast majority of people are not thinking that way and I certainly am not thinking that way when I make the phrase, the book was better. I usually like books better because I really, really value being in a character's head. Being in a character's head, really hearing their thoughts and emotions is something that usually you cannot do in TV and film. Additionally, I just tend to like the extra details that are given in a book. I like a lot of details. I get stuck in the weeds about things. And so because of that, I really like books. Additionally, I just don't know a lot about film and TV. I don't know a lot about the craft. So I think a lot of things are just lost on me when I watch adaptations. A good example I can think of this is that I once had a coworker who studied film in school and we watched an adaptation of a book and she was pointing out all of this stuff in the film and all these cool techniques they used and why they filmed this certain way and why they did this. And it actually made me appreciate the adaptation way more, all the thought that went into it, things that just went over my head because I wasn't equipped to notice things that she was as someone who loved film. But that means we also need to acknowledge and recognize that film has its own unique way of telling stories that are very important and different than any other storytelling medium. When I think of film, I think specifically of music, how music can really define a mood and a setting. There's a reason that good adaptations music often becomes so iconic. And if I wouldn't get demonetized, I'd play some of my favorites there, but here, but you know, music, costume design, mood lighting, setting, actors who can bring things to life. All of those can bring very specific and special unique things to a story. And if your favorite storytelling medium involves those elements, it would not surprise me to hear that you tend to like film adaptations of things better because those are the unique story elements that you appreciate. So the phrase, the book was always better is a myth, sort of. It just depends on which storytelling medium you like best. If you are a reader and your favorite way of getting a story is through reading, you will probably always find the book to be better in general. If one of your favorite storytelling mediums is film or TV, then there are gonna be a lot of cases where you probably like the adaptation better. And if you like both storytelling mediums, it might just be up to the adaptation on whether you like it or not. And so when someone says, I liked the book better, it isn't always intended as a moralizing statement or as a holier than thou statement. It might just be because the person really likes reading. Now I know that there are a lot more elements to this issue, but I enjoyed thinking about this one and I'd love to know if I made you think about that phrase differently. So please let me know in the comments. As always, if you like these kind of random deep dives and videos, please like and subscribe. That is the best way to support me. And if you wanna see what I'm currently reading as well as other nerdy rants or instant reactions to any TV show or book that I'm watching or reading, you can check me out on Instagram at bookborn.reviews. I'll see you next time, bye.